Welcome friends, I'm Dr. Rajshrina Budripad and today's video is all about a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, also known as H. pylori. H. pylori is a unique bacteria that likes to infect the stomach. In today's video, we're going to go over all the symptoms and potential consequences of an H. pylori infection. In the stomach, H. pylori most commonly causes gastritis, which is inflammation of the lining of the stomach. It can also cause ulcers, both in the stomach as well as the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. H. pylori is responsible for more than 80% of gastric and duodenal ulcers. A chronic infection with H. pylori could lead to gastric cancer, which is the fifth most frequently diagnosed malignancy worldwide and the third cause of death due to cancers worldwide. H. pylori can also be a cause for gastric malt lymphoma. This is a slow-growing cancer of B cells, which fortunately has a high cure rate if you treat the underlying H. pylori infection. An infection with H. pylori can cause a wide range of symptoms, including abdominal pain or burning, dyspepsia, which is discomfort in the upper abdomen, loss of appetite, gas and bloating, nausea and vomiting, acid reflux or heartburn, black stools, anemia, or even bad breath. H. pylori is an extremely common infection. In fact, over half the world's population is infected with H. pylori. 90% of people infected with H. pylori are asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms, but they can still spread it to other people. H. pylori is more common in developing countries where there's crowded environments, poor sanitation and hygiene practices, as well as lower socioeconomic status. In fact, the infection rate can be well over 80% in developing countries. In contrast, the infection rate is lower, ranging from 20 to 50% in industrialized countries. So how does a person get infected with H. pylori? If you're drinking contaminated water that has fecal bacteria, this can lead to fecal-oral transmission of H. pylori. It can also be spread by animals infected with H. pylori. For example, if a dog licks your face. H. pylori could also be spread through saliva. We call this oral transmission. Food sharing or sharing utensils with a person infected with H. pylori could also spread the bacteria. If you're traveling and eat contaminated street food, this is another way you could get an H. pylori infection. In addition, if you eat contaminated restaurant food, whether it's a salad, sushi, or a burger, this could also lead to an H. pylori infection. Now that we've finished the introduction, I want to give you a brief overview of today's video. First, I'm going to cover the unique properties of H. pylori and why it's considered a grade 1 carcinogen. I'm going to review the extraintestinal manifestations of H. pylori. In other words, how H. pylori can affect other organ systems in your body. Then I'm going to explain the best ways to test for H. pylori. Finally, I'm going to review all the treatment options for H. pylori, both the conventional antibiotic treatments as well as my natural herbal protocol for H. pylori. So stay tuned! Now let's go over all the unique properties of H. pylori. Helicobacter pylori gets its name because it's actually helical in shape. It has multiple flagella which make it highly motile so it can swim in gastric content. How does H. pylori bacteria survive in the acidic environment of the stomach? H. pylori is a very smart bacteria. It produces an enzyme called urease which converts urea to ammonia. Ammonia is very alkaline, so it helps to neutralize stomach acid. This is an adaptation method that's helped H. pylori to overcome stomach acidity. This ability to produce urease is one of H. pylori's main virulence factors. H. pylori produces proteolytic enzymes that allow it to colonize the stomach's protective mucus layer and ultimately to degrade this mucus layer, which allows an ulcer to form. 
Different strains of H. pylori have different virulence factors, which are cytotoxic proteins with immune-activating properties which can lead to ulcers and cancer. Some strains of H. pylori have CAG-A, which stands for cytotoxin-associated gene A. It's considered an oncogenic protein because it causes chronic inflammation in the stomach, which can lead to gastric cancer. Other strains of H. pylori have VAC-A, which stands for vacuolating toxin A. This protein disrupts the tight junctions between cells and causes cell death, which can lead to ulcers. We've all heard of leaky gut, but in a sense, H. pylori causes leaky stomach because it degrades the junctions between the stomach cells, allowing an inflammatory cascade to enter the bloodstream. In the setting of an H. pylori infection, immune cells start releasing interleukins cytokines, and NF-kappa-beta. These can enter the bloodstream, and in some individuals, it triggers chronic systemic inflammation. This process is what causes many of the extra-intestinal manifestations of H. pylori, which we're going to go over shortly. H. pylori has been classified as a Group 1 carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer since 1994. When H. pylori infects the stomach, it causes gastritis, but it can survive in a host stomach for decades, leading to chronic inflammation. It causes the immune system to release inflammatory mediators like NF-kappa-beta. This inflammation becomes a double-edged sword because normally NF-kappa-beta is essential for activating the immune response against pathogens. But the chronic and sustained nature of the immune response towards the H. pylori bacteria over time causes cellular changes that can lead to gastric cancer. In some people, H. pylori can cause achlorhydria, which means low stomach acid. Normally, stomach acid is needed to digest proteins and to kill bad bacteria and yeast in the gut. This is why an H. pylori infection can cause a domino effect within the GI tract. It can lead to small intestine bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO, as well as dysbiosis, which means a bacterial imbalance. Symptoms of achlorhydria include burping, bloating, as well as bad breath. Another consequence of having low stomach acid is that it affects your digestion of proteins. This can lead to hair loss as well as brittle nails. Now, if you're suffering from a lot of bloating, I recommend learning more about SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. I have two videos on this topic. The first explains the condition in detail, and the second explains my natural herbal protocol for getting rid of SIBO. I'll put the links for the videos in the description below. Did you know that H. pylori can affect other organs in your body? Let's review all the extra-intestinal manifestations of H. pylori. Because it can lead to systemic inflammation, it can also trigger and flare up autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and Sjogren's syndrome. A study done in Japan shows that an H. pylori infection is associated with an increased risk of osteoporosis. This may be because H. pylori interferes with the absorption of nutrients. In the heart, H. pylori has been associated with coronary artery disease. In the brain, it's been associated with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and ischemic stroke. On the skin, H. pylori has been associated with rashes like eczema, chronic hives, rosacea, and psoriasis. Next, it can cause iron and B12 deficiency. In children, H. pylori infection has been associated with delayed growth, this is thought to be because it reduces ghrelin levels, a gastrointestinal hormone responsible for hunger and regulating food intake. Finally, H. pylori triggers an inflammatory cascade that has also been associated with insulin resistance and fatty liver disease. Moving on, let's talk about who discovered H. pylori. Barry Marshall and Robin Warren are the Australian scientists who discovered H. pylori in 1982. This was a major discovery because prior to this, it was a long-standing belief in medical teaching that stress and lifestyle factors were the main causes of peptic ulcer disease. Because of this pioneering work, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2005. 
The interesting part about the discovery was that it was actually a self-experiment. One day, Barry Marshall decided to self-infect himself with H. pylori by drinking a cloudy broth full of bacteria. Within days, he felt quite ill and had nausea and vomiting. He then underwent an endoscopy, which proved that he had developed gastritis from the H. pylori bacteria. Now let's talk about how do we diagnose H. pylori. The cheapest and easiest way is to do an H. pylori stool antigen test, which is available through most standard labs. If you have more serious symptoms and require an endoscopy, H. pylori can also be diagnosed by taking biopsies of the stomach. Another way to diagnose H. pylori is with a urea breath test. Remember how H. pylori makes the enzyme urease, which turns urea into ammonia? In this test, you first ingest a solution of urea, which has a radio-labeled carbon molecule. If you have an H. pylori infection, the bacteria will convert the urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will contain the same radio-labeled carbon molecule. This will travel through your bloodstream, and then your lungs will exhale this radio-labeled carbon dioxide molecule in your breath. So if your breath becomes positive for this radio-labeled carbon dioxide molecule, it means that you have an H. pylori infection. Now you might be wondering if there's a blood test for H. pylori. With a blood test, we can measure your IgG antibody levels towards the H. pylori bacteria. But unfortunately, this only tells us if you've had prior exposure to the bacteria. It doesn't tell us if you have an active infection. This is why the stool antigen test is preferred, because it tells us if you have an active H. pylori infection. Now you might be wondering if you have to take antibiotics to treat H. pylori. Let's go over all the treatment options. First, let's go over traditional antibiotic protocols. H. pylori can often be resistant to a single antibiotic. That's why these protocols involve two or more antibiotics taken simultaneously. They also involve the use of a proton pump inhibitor, also known as a PPI, which shuts down the acid production in your stomach. The most common first-line treatment is triple therapy, which is clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and a PPI. Unfortunately, there is growing resistance to triple therapy. In that case, you can use quadruple therapy, which is tetracycline, metronidazole, bismuth, and a PPI. There's also non-bismuth quadruple therapy, which is triple therapy with the addition of metronidazole. If a person has a resistant strain of H. pylori, there is an alternative second-line treatment. This involves a stronger antibiotic called levofloxacin, along with amoxicillin and a PPI. Let's go over some of the downsides to antibiotics. First of all, there's only a 70% efficacy of traditional triple therapy due to rising resistance. So this is pretty low for an infectious disease. Next, there are potential side effects of antibiotics. For example, antibiotics can also wipe out good bacteria in the gut microbiome. Sometimes this tips the balance of the microbiome, allowing yeast to overpopulate. This is why a lot of women suffer from vaginal yeast infections soon after taking antibiotics. The good news is there are natural herbal products that have shown efficacy against H. pylori. So now let me present my natural herbal protocol for H. pylori. Pylori Plus is a natural supplement that has ingredients to help target the H. pylori bacteria and heal the lining of the stomach. It contains berberine, mastic gum, zinc carnosine, and bismuth. Berberine comes from the root of the berberine plant, and it has antimicrobial properties against H. pylori, as well as other bad bacteria and yeast in the gut microbiome. Mastic gum comes from the sap of the mastic tree, which is native to the Mediterranean region. There was a randomized pilot study showing successful eradication of H. pylori using mastic gum. Zinc carnosine is known to stabilize the mucosal lining of the stomach and small intestine. Finally, bismuth is a naturally occurring mineral that's been used to soothe the stomach and intestinal lining, and it's also been shown to have efficacy against H. pylori. As you might recall, bismuth is also part of traditional quadruple therapy. 
In my natural herbal protocol, I recommend combining pylori plus with oregano oil and allicidin. It's helpful to use a combination of herbs to overcome any bacterial resistance and to combat more virulent strains of H. pylori. There was an observational study showing that oregano oil in combination with mastic gum and bismuth has efficacy in eradicating H. pylori. This study was published in the Natural Medicine Journal in 2015. Allicidin has the antimicrobial parts from garlic, known as allicin. There was a meta-analysis published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology looking at over eight randomized control trials with over 800 participants. It concluded that allicin as an add-on therapy improves H. pylori eradication, healing of ulcers, as well as remission of symptoms. To improve the efficacy of this natural protocol, I recommend taking one capsule each of pylori plus, oregano oil, and allicidin three times a day after meals for one month. I also recommend taking a high-quality probiotic and digestive enzymes. Our probiotic 100 billion has over five strains of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium to improve the health of your gut microbiome. It's best taken one capsule in the morning on an empty stomach with a glass of water. Digestive Enzyme Pro is a broad-spectrum enzyme. Not only can it help you digest your food better, but it can also help you better tolerate the herbal antimicrobials. It's best taken one to two capsules either before or after meals. Once you've completed treatment for H. pylori, whether you choose the antibiotic approach or the herbal protocol, it's a good idea to repeat testing to confirm that the infection has cleared. Here we have my patient Kevin who followed the herbal protocol and he was so happy because his repeat stool antigen test came back negative for H. pylori. The other nice thing is a lot of patients report feeling great on the herbal protocol. They often notice better digestion and better bowel habits. This is probably because the herbs also work to treat any bacterial or fungal dysbiosis in the gut. The probiotics and digestive enzymes also make a big difference. Here's a summary of my herbal protocol for H. pylori. You start by taking probiotic 100 billion first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. After every meal, which is usually three times a day, you'll take one capsule each of pylori plus, oregano oil, and allicidin. The herb should be taken for at least one month. Finally, Digestive Enzyme Pro should be taken one to two capsules before or after every meal. Although there's never a guarantee, I have seen excellent results in eradicating H. pylori using this herbal protocol with my patients. It's a good idea to have your family members tested for H. pylori as well. That way, they can also seek treatment if necessary, and it can help prevent you from getting reinfected. It's important to be aware that my herbal protocol is intended for adults or older teens. For younger children infected with H. pylori, please consult with their pediatrician. Let's review the key points from today's video. More than half the world's population is infected with H. pylori, but most people are asymptomatic. It can be transmitted person to person through contaminated saliva, water, or food. H. pylori causes gastritis, gastric and duodenal ulcers, and certain virulent strains can also cause gastric cancer. H. pylori produces the enzyme called urease, which converts urea to ammonia, allowing it to survive in the acidic environment of the stomach. H. pylori is also associated with a wide range of extraintestinal manifestations in organs throughout the body. It can be diagnosed through a stool antigen test, a urea breath test, or an endoscopy with a biopsy. There are many ways to treat H. pylori, including traditional antibiotic protocols or my herbal protocol, which I presented in today's video. Thanks so much for watching, everyone! If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to post all your questions and comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again and have a wonderful day!